Power on Bloomberg TV. With both houses of Congress back in session this week, one key topic dominating the agenda, avoiding a government shutdown. And joining us now to discuss that, Republican Congressman Ben Klein of Virginia. He's chairman of the Republican Study Committee Budget and Spending Task Force. Congressman, thank you so much and welcome back to Washington. I know you have a busy week ahead of you. You are on appropriations judiciary. You're part of the Freedom Caucus and you're part of the problem solvers. You could potentially be an individual that is the glue to a lot of what Speaker McCarthy wants to get done. Do you foresee McCarthy being able to avoid a shutdown coming September 30th? Uh, we hope so. Nobody wants to shut down. We all want to get the appropriations bills done. And uh, if we had really started sooner from a more conservative position, uh, the Freedom Caucus was advocating for this for many, many months, uh, we, we would probably be there by now. Uh, we need f additional cuts beyond the level of the debt ceiling agreement that was hashed out with the Senate, at least from a starting point in the House. That's what the Freedom Caucus is looking for, pre-COVID spending levels. And we can get these done if we uh, just find those savings, which my budget in the RSC has accomplished already. We have a balanced budget. It provides the cuts. We just need to put them into our appropriations bills. It's sure complex uh, trying to follow the bead on this at times. Congressman, and you can probably relate in your own way. It's not just differences between Democrats and Republicans. It's not just differences between Republicans in the House. It's Republicans in the House and the Senate. We heard from uh, Republican Senator Ron Johnson about this on Fox News. Here's what he said. We'll have you respond. We right. have plenty of people in, in, in the Republican Party that also are happy to mortgage our children's future because spending money is popular. Bringing home the bacon to your district or to your state is popular. And we, we need the public to start getting energized about this and, and demanding that we stop doing it. So, Congressman, if we're in a world and you're seeing this play out between your own committee assignments in which Republicans cannot agree together, how do we get to a world in which Republicans and Democrats make a deal? It, it is a challenge, you know, uh, government is always chaotic, divided government even more so. But we can get that agreement if we start in the House from Republican priorities. Uh, let's look at those bills where we have consensus and where we want to prioritize defense, veterans, border security. And if we do decide to provide additional funding in those areas, then we need to commit to provide less in other areas, the, the woke and weaponized education bureaucracy that we have here in Washington, uh, we can find the savings. The Republican Study Committee budget has found them. And we should at least start from that position before we start talking about compromising in the middle. When you start from a compromise, uh, you're really giving away a lot of your negotiating position. But didn't we already have a compromise, Cong Congressman, when you look back at the debt ceiling deal um, that really had the caps on what should have been for these appropriation bills that Speaker McCarthy was able to negotiate with the Biden administration? Well, you had more Democrats voting for that debt ceiling bill than Republicans. And so I was one of the ones who voted against it. I voted for the House version because the House version was conservative, but the final version gave too much away. It extended the debt ceiling uh, limit deadline past next November's presidential election. So our ability to... So we're uh, reopening up that deal then? Is Speaker McCarthy basically reopening up that, that deal? He, gave, he made a deal with the Biden administration? Well, he can always uh, ensure that these appropriations bills uh, start from a conservative position. And the Senate has already extended these bills. They, they're funding beyond the debt ceiling limit. So the question has to be asked, if they're moving above the debt ceiling levels, uh, why shouldn't we cut more so that we're negotiating back to the middle ground? You are the Republican chair, Congressman, of the Study Committee Budget and Spending Task Force, which doesn't get a lot of talk around here, but you basically have to field all of the budget requests that are coming in from members. If you think the government is spending too much money, do you tell them no? Uh, actually, the people who are submitting 
suggestions to the Republican Study Committee budget. You know, the Republican Study Committee is the largest caucus of Republicans uh, other than our Republican conference. So it's about 180 members. And mm -hmm. those who are submitting suggestions to this document are conservatives. And so they're looking for ways to save taxpayer dollars. Now we have a balanced budget. It, it balances and actually in seven years. So Ron years, Johnson is not correct then. Just to be clear, Congressman, Republicans are asking only for cuts. No one's asking to bring the bacon home to their district, as he said. Oh, there are plenty of Senate Republicans who want to spend beyond the debt ceiling limits, and they're pushing these appropriations bills through with bipartisan majorities. So they are. I mean, in your own conference, House House members asking you or making requests to your committee. There are House members who want to spend above. But they are few and far between, and, and for the most part, we are actually providing the cuts necessary to get uh, these bills passed. We have to pass with conservative, uh, we have to get to 218, the Democrats aren't going to help us, so we have to make sure that these bills are conservative enough. And adding something like H.R. 2, the immigration bill, the border security bill, uh, which got 218 Republican votes, uh, should be a no-brainer because you're just voting for something you already voted for once. Uh, Congressman, I also want to ask you, Speaker McCarthy has spoken a lot about this potential impeachment inquiry, and it's something definitely the Freedom Caucus or members of some members of the Freedom Caucus want to see. Is that still going to be on the table come, come, this, uh, come this session? It is, and it's under discussion. McCarthy has said he's open to it, and I think there's enough evidence to at least start the impeachment inquiry. We need uh, more concise summarization of the evidence from the Oversight Committee, from the Ways and Means Committee, about the Biden corruption scheme that he has uh, with his family uh, being enriched from a pay-to-play scheme that uh, apparently involves the president meeting with clients of the family members. And uh, there's a question of how much money was there. Uh, it, we're talking about tens of millions of dollars flowing to the Biden family. Uh, we have Hunter Biden on a tweet, on a text saying, complaining about having to provide half of his salary to POPs. But there's only one pops. It's not even the big guy. So who are we talking about? So here? why not just move to impeach? Why even have the inquiry, Congressman? Well, I think we need to, again, uh, assemble the evidence and present it in a way because we don't have 218 votes for impeachment yet. Uh, we have Republicans who are supportive of impeachment, but we have some who are on the fence who need to see the evidence and be convinced that it's the right step to take. Yeah, I know that uh, there are a lot of people who disagree with you on that, and that's a debate that we'll also be following going forward this fall. Congressman Ben Klein, we thank you for your time today on Bloomberg. Coming up.